Welcome to the world's fastest growing podcast that interviews random Todds and asks them unpredictable questions in a series of wacky segments. Here at the Toddcast, we believe every Todd has a story and we want to hear it. So today, we have the World Arm Wrestling League heavyweight champion, Monster Michael Todd. You can find him on Instagram at Monster Michael Todd. That's where we slid into his DMs and he agreed to join us today on the Toddcast. Even though your first name is Michael, this is the Toddcast. We're going we're gonna to refer to you as Todd here and there. Uh, I hope that's all right. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. <laughs> how's, the, how's the evening going? Man, it's good. It's good. Uh, we have just recently done an addition to our, our training facility. Uh, my wife and I run Todd Soda Transformations. So we're in the process of getting an extra thousand square foot done. And I've been hanging, you know, banners and, and canvases and awards and posters and shadow boxes. So <laughs> I've had a busy day. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to jump right into the first segment called Once Upon a Todd. Once Upon a Todd. All right, so Once Upon a Todd is a segment where we just want to hear about who you are, Todd. Uh, What do you want the listeners to know? Uh, I'll just kind of give you a little bit of free reign right here, and we'll ask questions. Got you, got you. Okay, so uh, like you said, I'm Monster Michael Todd, World Arm Wrestling Champion. I've been competing. This is my 30th year competing. I started when I was 17 years old at the Saline County Fair, like a couple of counties away from here. I had arm wrestled in high school. I was actually in martial arts as a kid. I was a short, fat kid growing up. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I, I saw karate kids, so I started taking Shotokan karate. Then I got into taekwondo and was a black belt by the time I was 14. And then between 14 and 15, I hit a growth spurt. And then I kept growing every year to my senior year when I was 6'3", 215. So Whew. I started arm wrestling with my dad as a 15-year-old kid just messing around. By the time I was a senior, I could pretty much beat everybody in school. I was at Votech, and they said, hey, this guy over here is second in the state. So he got on the cafeteria table, and I beat him. He was like, you should go to this tournament. Well, that was the 1990 Saline County Fair. Fast forward 30 years, I've won 36 national titles and 21 world titles. Uh, The national titles have been over six different weight classes. So I started out at 198, 209, 220, 231, 242, super. So uh, I've been at this thing for a long time. Dang. Wow. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's That's a lot to digest right there. (laughs) So so you said that you've traveled the world. Obviously, you won some – some national and world titles here. Uh, so what's kind of the, the craziest encounter you've had while you were abroad? Oh man, we've had all kinds of awesome experiences through arm wrestling. Like, so I probably made about $400,000 in 30 years. So I could have made more money working at McDonald's. Um, but I've been, <laughs> right. So I've traveled the world. I've, I've been on G550 private jets and had some really cool life experiences. But one of the cool things was we got invited to go to Kuwait six years ago. Now, Kuwait City is not somewhere I would have chosen for a, a destination, right? But super good hosts. They're from um, where are they for? Lebanon. They're from Lebanon. So they, they invited us over, and we held three different events at these three different universities. Well, my wife and I had just recently gotten married, and fortunately, we got married because if we wouldn't have, we'd have to stay in separate rooms, right? Mm. The rules are kind of crazy. So no public displays of affection and, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning over to give my wife a kiss on multiple occasions and realize, oh, my God, we might get married. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a crazy experience for us. Really, I think they were just put you in jail. But uh, <laughs> awesome experience. But one of the cool things about that was our host took us to this amazing mall. I think it's like the ninth largest mall in the world, but I mean, it looked like the largest mall in the world. It's enormous. And there's a restaurant called Alfredo's. The story I was told is this the grandson of the guy who invented Alfredo sauce in Rome. There's an original Alfredo's in Rome, and this was the second location. And what they do is they have special guests. They, uh, they, they serve up this Alfredo in this big dish. And at the end of the, as they hand out all the Alfredo, there's this big dish and you eat out of this big dish with a golden fork and spoon. So if you go on TripAdvisor, type in Monster Michael Todd and Alfredo's or Kuwait, you see me like this, right? <laughs> That's super awesome. And then uh, what was super cool about that experience is they have these books of all the celebrities and people who have who came in there and eaten at that restaurant. 
And right next to Walt Disney, mine and my wife's signatures are right next to it. Oh, man. So, dude, I mean, like I said, I, I didn't make a lot of money doing this sport, but I've had some <laughs> experiences. Yeah, the experiences, it seems like, pay for themselves. That's that's wild. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, another thing about that. So, I was not in a team sports as a kid. Like I said, I was in martial arts. But so I went over to a friend's house, and they'd have a T-ball trophy in their shelf and all this stuff. Well, I didn't have that. So, when I won my first arm wrestling award, which is hanging right over there on the wall, I've kept everything for the last 30 years. Now, I may have lost a couple dozen moving over the years, but we counted about five years ago. It was a little over a thousand. So in this gym where I train at, it's very inspiring and motivating. It's not the first place trophies. It's that second, third, or even fifth place plaque hang on the wall that fires you up and makes sure you get through that workout, you know? So yeah, it's wow. kind of crazy. So the, the awards, the money's going to spend, the awards and the memories are going to last forever. That's a good life philosophy right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we did we did a little research and we saw your wife also is into arm wrestling and she's won some national champions as well. She's a seven so seven time national champion, but she actually wow. retired in December of two thousand eighteen. Okay. It's possible she would come back out of retirement, but basically she's like, This stuff's really painful. I haven't gotten injured yet. I might as well quit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. she's more of a supporter. My stepson is also a seven time national champion. So she loves to support us and watch us compete. Uh, she's still really fit. Like she trains and maintains a really aesthetic, you know, fit body. Um, but yeah, her, her, we, we've actually considered going into competitive eating because we're serious foodies around here. So we had a, <laughs> we got back for a belated anniversary trip to Vegas, right? So this COVID thing's been crazy. They canceled my WAL season. Huge hit financially for me. Yeah. Uh, we said, okay, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and celebrate our anniversary. It's three weeks after. Let's go to Vegas. We went out there and we've been eating clean for 38 days. No bad meals, no cheap meals, nothing. Our macros are perfect. We got there and kill it. So we're only there for four <laughs> days to actually eat. The fifth day we come home. I got home, I was 19 pounds heavier. <laughs> so I wow. 19 pounds in four and a half days. Uh, you take advantage of it. Giordano is three out of four days already there. Like you, we're big pizza fans. So like I need a Giordano sponsor. Like oh, Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we're foodies, man. I'm telling you. I think we had three Giordano's large pizzas, birthday cake, burger and fries three times, ice cream every night. Like, we, yeah, we're, we, we throw down. Like home alone yeah. ended up over there. Yeah. He's got like a bowl of ice crazy. cream this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back in 2000, the big Texan Amarillo, you need to get it free. I ate it in 19 minutes when I weighed like 198. <laughs> so, so I know you said you would do food eating potentially. If it would pizza, would that be your food of choice or? Oh my god! Anything for a birthday cake? I can take a quarter sheet cake and finish it by myself in ten minutes. What? <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, I kind of go into like this. The sugar kind of hits me, and I kind of pass out. Wake up a couple hours later, but yeah, <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> that's that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, wow. I don't think I couldn't do like a hot dog. It couldn't be foods that I don't right. like. Like I'm never gonna be good at that, you know. <laughs> or like the, the chick that ate all the mayonnaise. I'm not yeah, sure. that's. Oh. But again, yeah, I don't see how people do that in front of me. My best ever, which is, you know, you can't really count. It's, it's, little, it's uh, CC's, right? I had 47 pieces of pizza at a CC's buffet back in 2001. Oh. I made weight at the point. <laughs> I just made 198, and I went and had 47 pieces of pizza. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. I think um, my record, I, I, I've hit 24 Chick-fil-A nuggets. That's the most I've, I think I've ever eaten. <laughs> I don't know how, to, how, how you, what the comparison is to a pizza, but <laughs> yeah. I did not feel great after I ate those uh, chicken nuggets. It was too many. It seemed. I, got a, I got a tiny stomach. <laughs> I'm telling you. So we, we have a YouTube channel called Monster and Mrs. Monster. And it's, you know, it's, it's lifestyle, it's healthy living, it's workouts, it's arm wrestling, it's preparation. It's just, it's just us, right? But I think we'd do better if we had an eating challenge channel. Cause that stuff gets a lot of views, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. People, oh, people yeah. love yeah. watching that. Fun. So they have to work out all the time and almost die. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's me in a nutshell, pretty much. Nice. nice. It's pretty impressive. I work out cause I have to, not cause I want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for the eating channel. Yeah. <laughs> me. We'll be the first to subscribe. Oh, we see you have a uh, two grandchildren. I have four grandchildren. Oh, four. Well, that's double what I thought. <laughs> but in my right now I've had I've got two grandsons and two granddaughters. Uh and I've been in the room when all of them were born. So my, my first granddaughter, um her and my stepson and his fiance lived with us for the first nine months. Yeah. So like I held her every day, listened to her cry every day. So 
she's like my own. Like I'm specially, I'm, right. I'm small, but I'm specially bonded to her, you know? Uh, yeah. But yeah, we have amazing, amazing grandchildren. Um, yeah, man, we've got four rescue bully breeds. Uh, we got Maya, Millie, Oreo, and Ollie. And uh, having four pit bull breeds is rough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we're at our limit, right? So in our city limits, you can't have more than four. So, oh. yeah. But they're awesome, man. We, I mean, our dogs are like our kids. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, that's that's great that you took in the rescues as well. Oh man, I'm. I'm telling you, we'd have a we'd have a, a sanctuary for. We, it's something about the bully breeds we're, we're especially drawn to them because I think they're they're misunderstood. The animals are amazing. I mean, from my understanding, they're originally bred as nanny dogs in the UK. Yeah. I mean, they're amazing. My grandkids are amazing dogs. It's just you know, people. It's how you raise a dog. It's how you treat a dog. You know, exactly. Yeah, we, we love them so much. But I mean, so we have. We went to Punta Cana a few years ago for a vacation, and they had two full size beds slammed together. So it's a pretty good size bed. But we had a king size bed. I'm thinking, you know, we got enough room in our suite upstairs. Let's just slam two king size beds together. We have twelve and a half. Foot, there's twelve foot by six and a half foot bed, so that fits me, my wife, four dogs, four grandkids. I mean, we can all hang out. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. I've considered so you- a third king size bed next to it, but yeah. <laughs> it, would there, it would hit the staircase on the way. Like you come up the spiral staircase and land right in the bed. So I think that's probably inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with the grandchildren, do you think they're going to continue the arm wrestling legacy? Man, I have no idea. Uh, my Riley, the one that uh, my stepson is, he only has the one daughter and he has her pulling on him all the time. She's yeah. horrible though. I mean, I don't know, man, if they, w- I want them to be gymnasts. Gymnasts are pound for pound the strongest mm-hmm. athletes in the world. Oh yeah. I don't care what you, those, those are, gymnasts are amazing. <laughs> so I, I tell them, Hey, build them <laughs> down the hallway. Just put up a set of monkey bars and make them walk the monkey bars instead of walking. <laughs> <laughs> an amazing athlete like that. But yeah, I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> whatever they want to be i'll be happy you know yeah, oh, yeah i think that's a that's a good way to put it don't don't force them into into it just because you enjoy it that that happens a lot with people these days so i think that's cool sweet well let's go ahead and jump into the next segment which is called quarantine more like boring team yeah so in the in this segment we just we know the world is crazy right now. People have been in quarantine. We got all this COVID stuff going around. How, how has quarantine changed your life? How has COVID really affected your n- normal daily activities? I know you've brought up, you have the home gym going on. Yeah. So here's the deal for me. Uh, the only, okay. I'm going to back up a little quarantine COVID. It's crazy. Uh, March 11th. I had a dear friend of mine contact me from Italy and his 82 year old grandmother had passed away. Oh, two days are so as soon as I heard that I'm like okay this is real you gotta be right crazy. my mother's 78 years old and I'm you know, I, I don't think it's gonna kill me but I want to give it to my mom or my grandkids or something so we've been we've been following all the guidelines wearing masks and all that stuff and uh it's 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 horrible <laughs> it's just it's yeah like flying to Vegas on the plane I'm already kind of claustrophobic anyway having to wear that mask is horrible right but you know you still do it right so uh but I'm gonna go back even further than that so my wife and I've been together nine years and in those nine years, we'd never been apart more than nine hours. Like we'd, we'd ran a business together. We did network marketing together. So she's my best friend. So I, I didn't do guy trips. You know, I just, my yeah. best friend is my wife. So that's who I hung out with. That's so cool. we'd never been apart more than nine hours. Not, never went, not went to bed next to each other, not woke up next to each other. Well, she applied for a job. She was a labor delivery nurse before we got together. And um, so she'd been out of, and then she's like, hey, let's, let's just see if there's any openings. So last year she applied and she was supposed to start. In January, but they for a nursery position, day shift nursery. Well, they filled that with in-house staff. So the only thing they had left in the end of January, we got we went on a cruise and we went to Denmark for an event, came back home, and uh, they had a graveyard labor delivery. So at six forty-five, I drop her off at work, I come back and pick up at seven fifteen. So that happened just before COVID. So had that not happened, that's the big, the big the biggest change in my life is not being able to have my wife here. You know, right. Originally thought she'd work a day shift. I'd go meet her for lunch. I'd come back. So we still wouldn't have been part more than nine hours. I'd meet her six and a half hours and pick her back up six hours later. And it's going to be great. Well, even with COVID, I wouldn't have been able to do that because you can't even go to the hospitals, right? You can't take anybody with yeah. you. You can't go see her. Um, yeah. So as far as quarantine and COVID, I, I, I'm pretty much, I'm in front of people all the time when I'm competing. So when I'm home, we're kind of, I wouldn't say antisocial, but I have everything I need in my house, right? Right. So my life didn't change much. I and mean, we went hiking a lot because we, we hiked anyway. 
Yeah. We still wanted to be outside and do stuff, but you didn't really want to be around a bunch of people. I got stronger than I've ever been in my life because I had more. And it wasn't because of quarantine. It was because my wife was sleeping during the day. <laughs> you work night. Well, she's at upstairs sleeping. So I just come out in the gym and train. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up doing stuff, hitting PRs on lifts I'd never done before. And I'd been prepping for my world title event since January for April 21st in Las Vegas or Los Angeles. Then they postponed it to July 14th. So I had hit this. I was in the process of peaking for that match and they, they postponed it. So I couldn't drop the weights back to my normal weight. So I had to stay at that weight for the next few months before I started peaking again. And then a schedule for July, July 14th. Then they postponed it to August 11th. So I couldn't go back and wait again. So I just had it was a, the heaviest and hardest I'd ever trained in my life, right? For that long a period. Yeah. And then about two weeks ago, they tell me they're going to postpone it till maybe November, December. And then uh, I'm like, all right, cool. And then six hours later, I'm, uh, somebody sends me a video that they canceled the whole season. I'm like, what the heck? Right. Oh, man. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just quarantine for me is just basically me living my same life. Yeah. Except for the fact that my wife had started work and started, you know, went back to school to get a nurse practitioner degree. So she's not at work. She's doing homework. And so my life shifted drastically because of those things, but not because of quarantine, because we really pretty much just like it's summer here. So we just go hang out in the pool during the day. You know I mean? We, right. We're not, I, I still train clients. I just made them wear a mask, you know? Um, but yeah, it didn't really change much for me. It's just, life has changed so much outside yes. of my normal routine. Just, mm -hmm. You know, going to the store, having to wear a mask. I haven't hugged my mom in five months. You know, yeah. so things like that have been very difficult. You know, but you know, there's a lot of people who got it way worse than me. So I just uh, once we do the new grand opening, hopefully we'll get enough clients to get get the wife back home and she doesn't have to do the labor delivery thing and go back to work yeah. together again. So that's now that I'm at. that'll be nice. It, it's good to hear that there have. Ha there have been some positives to it. It's, it's kind of unfortunate that a lot of the stuff has happened the way it has, especially her working the graveyard shift. I know that that's rough. Um, no, it's rude for her because the next day she, it, she never catches up. Right. So it doesn't right. take three nights work. Mm -hmm. It takes like another day or two for her to just rebound to being normal. Right. You're always behind. No, man, it's horrible. It's horrible. So yeah. with this new addition, our second floor is going to end up being our, like our personal use cardio theater room, office, media room. So I've got a, a big sectional couch with an ottoman. It basically makes it into a big bed up there. But this is the most quiet place in the house. Like, no dog, you can't hear the dogs barking or anything. So on the days that I'm not training that she comes home from work, if I'm not training clients, she just goes up there and sleeps because she's yeah. out. Like, nobody interrupts her. Nobody bothers her for like six or seven hours, eight hours, whatever. So that's cool. But I would much prefer her back home and us being on a more of a routine that we're used to, which is, you know, we get up. We want to get up. We do our yeah. stuff. We train our clients. Because that's the other thing is I'm yeah. used to just taking vacations. Like, hey, let's go somewhere, right? Yeah. For nine years, we've been able to do that. She's like, well, I can't get off. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? You, you, you got to get off. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what are you talking about? We just got to move my clients and we'll leave. You know? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, that's, been a, that's been a big adjustment period for us. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's good that you've gotten stronger, too. I know a lot of people, there's been two routes. You either work out <laughs> and get get really strong or you just you kind of you kind of bulk up in a in a negative way. <laughs> yeah, I think the average person gained like 18 pounds during quarantine or something. Yeah, I, I could imagine. Um, I'm one of those. Yeah. <laughs> what? Nah, but that, it, it doesn't I'm one meal away and one workout away from never eating right again and never working out again. Like I'm a <laughs> person, bedridden person in six months if I stop now. It's a fact because yeah. I have an obsessive compulsive personality, you know, and I want to eat as much as I can today because I'll probably start my diet tomorrow. So I'm going to eat as much as I can today. And when then tomorrow comes, I'm going to eat as much as I can today and I'll start tomorrow. Before you know it. Yeah. You know. I think I've said that about 26 times in the past, like four, <laughs> four weeks. <laughs> it's every Sunday. I'm like, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow diet starts. And then I just Monday, I'm like, and eh, we'll do it next week. <laughs> I'll get it next week. Mine yeah. was always tomorrow. Like it was never next week. Yeah. I never, never <laughs> confident to push it the next week. I'm like, all right, I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and eat everything in the house today. And then there'll be a little bit left over. Like say I get, I used to get this special. I'd get three large pizzas at a really good deal. And I'd go buy a birthday cake and a half gun ice cream. And I would eat that every day. Um, <laughs> but there'd always be like a half of a pizza left. So I'd get up the next morning. I'd kill cardio and I'd be training. And I'm good. I've had my shakes. And around noon, that damn pizza was calling me, you know? And I was like, yeah. Oh, all right, I'm going to eat that. I'm going to order some more and then I'm going to start tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Right. I couldn't just eat the half a pizza. 
If I'm eating, well, of course, like I can't have an M M&M. and M. If I'm eating an M M&M, and M, I'm eating everything. Yeah, it's irresponsible not to finish the whole thing. <laughs> Absolutely, I would be doing so, a disservice to the people who made the pizza. Exactly. So, with the birthday cakes, do you get act? Do you make them right? Happy birthday, Michael, on them each time you get one. I, 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 I we we randomly have them right. Just funny stuff, but no, we don't get happy birthday. Right. Like, See, I think that's better. Yeah, we just randomly like happy awesome day happy <laughs> home, home home together day just stupid stuff you know but hey, i like that yeah. you gotta have fun with it it's always a celebration around here you know what i'm saying I'm <laughs> you, you could if you go on my instagram or my wife's it's monster and mrs monster that's her other instagram page and you can yeah. see how happy rebecca is when they deliver the giordano's pizza to her uh like it's just like r- real yeah. joy you know what i'm saying like <laughs> I'm telling you guys we are serious about this because that's that that's a deep dish isn't it Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, Giordano's I've heard is like, deep dish, flaky, and then it's the toppings, and it's the cheese, and it's the sauce. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's basically a pizza cake. It's <laughs> pizza awesomeness. <laughs> now, well, I, it's it sounds like you've um you've really done made your own out of the whole quarantine situation. Outside of um outside the outside world, I know it's changed, but it seems like you've embraced it and. The changes that you've had come. I'm not a guy who worries about things I can't control. I, right. I control what I can control, you know, and I can control what I eat. I can control how much I work. And that's how it comes down to. That's why I've been so uh, successful in my career is I don't worry about what the other guy's doing. I just make sure I'm doing everything I can do, right? What are you going to do for this guy? I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to train exactly the way I train always. I'm going to be the best version of me, and hopefully the best version of me beats the best version of him. Yes. Because, okay. I mean, if you waste yourself worrying about, waste your time worrying about what somebody else is doing, you're, you're taking away from what you should be doing, you know? So cool. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we'll roll into the next segment. It's time to prod Todd. All right. So in this segment, we're going to ask you a series of random questions. Some of them are going to feel like they come out of left field. This is kind of a fun, wacky segment, so just uh, give your best answer. We can marinate on some of these questions if you want, or we can just they can be one word, and we keep moving. So I'll do, but the first question is, what is your favorite Disney movie? Man, I wouldn't even know. Uh, I know I got four grandkids <laughs> you know, who make Disney movies. What, what, what's a good Disney movie? Oh. I, I, uh. I, <laughs> Uh, I'm sure Google I'm Disney, Disney movies. Disney movies. I love <laughs> Disney, but I have no idea. Uh, what would be a, my favorite Disney movie? I, I don't even know what a Disney. What would be a good Disney movie? Uh, uh, I think uh, Frozen. Okay. A lot of people like. Yeah, Frozen's a big one. Aladdin. I've never, never seen, seen Aladdin. It. Never seen it. Oh, the the Lion King. Oh, Lion King. Great movie. Yeah, Bam. Great movie. Lion King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer. <laughs> All right. So this this question comes in from a member of the Todd Squad at Hello Clutter. Toilet paper, do you fold or bunch? Oh, fold, definitely. Uh, that's a good move. That's I respect you more, Todd. It makes sense. What is wrong with you? I mean, people? Hey, there, there's people out there that are just willy nilly. <laughs> All right. What's your go to cheat meal? <laughs> pizza. <laughs> pizza, cake, and ice cream. I'm telling you. <laughs> we have to have like pizza. And then I got to have cake. Now, my wife wants cake and ice cream together. I really can just go straight down on cake. Just like bam, 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 till the cake. I can't eat as much cake if I eat ice cream at the same time. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Pizza cake. Now, I will finish with ice cream. I just may not have ice cream on top of my cake. Right. <laughs> Somehow it slows down the amount of cake I can eat. <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah. No, and it's a, when it's a cheat meal, I'm cheating. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's gonna go all in. Miserable, and my guts protruding about six, seven inches. I didn't do it right. That's right. Preach. So um, this one comes in from at Jordan Boyle. Big spoon or little spoon? And I think this is in reference to cuddling, and not utensils. <laughs> oh, I, I don't even know what the difference in a big spoon and a little spoon is in cuddling. But I'm telling you, if I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna have a big ass spoon. I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> but um, I can, I can't eat with a little teaspoon. I got to have a tablespoon or bigger. Man, I'm telling you. Oh yeah. Uh, that drives me nuts because um, that's the smallest portion of food I've ever put in my mouth ever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the difference in a big spoon and a little spoon on cuddling? I don't understand that. So like the big spoon is the person in back and the little spoon is the person in front. 
Okay, my wife's five three and I'm six three. So clearly I'm the big spoon. You know? I, don't, I don't know. You put out a little spoon vibe to me. <laughs> oh man, I wish we had video right now. Flexing on us. <laughs> Love it. All right. So oh great, great segue into this question. If you could replace your arms with anything, what would you choose and why? A billion dollars. <laughs> That's <laughs> so you're going to spend your arms. I guess you're spending energy on them. Let me tell them. you how this works, okay? I'm going to go ahead and break this down to you real quick. <laughs> you're, you're in general conversation, and you're saying something, saying something. You're like, oh, I wish. Like, I wish I had the day off, or if I wish I had this. Well, I messed up last year because I had said I wished I would be on the big screen at Madison Square Garden. And you know what happened in April? I was on the big screen at Madison Square Garden. And I'm like, dang it. I should have worked with the dogs. <laughs> You should have. Every single time I start to say I wish, it's immediately for a billion dollars. And then I follow it up with, but it would be nice to be off today. Or it'd be nice to <laughs> initial talk was gonna be. I always wish for a billion dollars because if I ever wish for something again and I get it and I did wish for a billion dollars, we would be really upset. Well we'll yeah. we'll we'll, um, we'll be back in touch. Once your arms become a billion dollars, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I, I should enter them, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that one, but I'm, I mean, a freak accident could happen. <laughs> That's true. Um, who would you choose to play you in a movie of your life? Oh, man. I don't know. I, see, the, the guy, there's, okay, so there's, there is, there's not a lot of actors that I really want to meet. Like, I'm, right. I'm, I'm not that, like, I, I, I missed a speaking role in Jason Statham's movie Homefront by one day. They wanted me out wow. there. I was in uh, Morro Bay, California. They need me in New Orleans the next day. I couldn't make it, so I showed up the day late, and I just hung out on the set with him for like eight hours. But I missed my speaker row. That was 2012. I ended up last year hanging out on the the, uh, the set of SWAT, and they mistook me for someone they had casted for the next week's episode. And I was leaving L.A. to go to Vegas for my anniversary. Like, hey, can you be back Monday to film? I'm like, yes. So I was season <laughs> three, episode two of, ba- of SWAT called Bad Faith. So I got to be on that. So – Shamar Moore's like, dude, you should definitely get into acting. You know, you got the look, you got the build, a lot of work for you. So I went and got an agent, and right before COVID, I had an audition for a movie, in a, a role in a Dolph Lundgren movie. So they called back, like, hey, we, we, we went ahead and rewrote the script, and we got rid of your character. But we'd love for you to come in and audition in person to see if we could get you another role. Right. We drive down to Birmingham, Alabama. We're walking to the place, with, and I look down, and there's a car coming, so I stop. And I was going to let him go in front of me, and the guy weighs me out. I'm like, hey, babe, that's Dolph Lundgren. Now, me growing up, Rocky IV, Drago, right? So right. it's confused for me. Well, I walk in, the guy's like, hey, so are you ready? I'm like, ah, man, I'm cool, dude. I'm already, I just saw Dolph Lundgren. He goes, well, he's going to be the one doing the cast. I'm like, sweet. So I walk in and meet Dolph Lundgren, and here's the cool compliment was, we're talking. He goes, yeah, yeah, I saw you outside. I mean, you look great. You look great. We'll find something for you. So I was telling him I had this world championship match. I had this going on. I had this motivational speaking gig I was doing at the Air Force. He's like, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get you in. Hmm. And then COVID happens, and they shut down production. Oh. Well, all that to say, if I was going to have someone, but The Rock is the guy I'd like to meet because I'd like to see if we're the same size. Right. I feel like we're the same size. Maybe I'm bigger. But <laughs> like, probably. Like, plus, he's a huge success story, right? I mean, yeah. he a story, like $7 in his pocket when he came home from the CFL, and then boom, highest paid actor in the world. Pretty cool, dude. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we'll keep rolling. The next question is what is the appropriate speed to drive on a 65 mile per hour road? 62. Ooh. Oh, under seven miles over. I, I always set my cruise at seven miles over. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's like under 10. They won't stop you. And yeah. I haven't had a traffic citation in 25 years. So I think I'm onto something. Oh, okay. Hey, that's, and I do have a 560 horsepower Corvette that I, I go really, really fast on the on-ramp. And then I slow down to seven over. <laughs> I got, you know, it's a six speed. So I got to go through the gears, like third yeah. gear, fourth gear. And I just yeah. put it in six. I set it seven miles over. Nice. Nice. So I just didn't, um, I didn't mean it to a, a, a break in the law on, on this thing. That's not good. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, everyone does it. So um, at Matt Keys. Why do vegans want you to know they're vegan so bad? Man, I don't know because they're miserable. Who the hell do I want to eat? 
<laughs> I don't. I don't want this to. That, that, that's not political or anything. But I mean, seriously, why would you not eat meat? Meat's amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I love yeah, it. Like hard to get rid of. <laughs> yeah. Do what? The bacon's a hard one to get rid of. I'm not gonna lie. I've, I mean, I've tried like 30 days vegan before. It's 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 tough. I mean, okay. I don't. I just don't understand it. Like I, I, I almost watched that video on Netflix about how going vegan makes you a better athlete or something. And I was like, Oh yeah, yeah. Stupid. You know, I just I couldn't even I couldn't even give it a chance because I'm not getting upset. Fair enough. I, th- I think you have enough accolades to show that you're already a pretty good athlete without being a vegan. So <laughs> I'm a little better than average. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're doing all right. Yeah. All right. So that brings us to our next segment. Oh my, Todd. All right. So in this segment, um. Basically, what is one thing about you that may surprise other people? Probably the thing that's about me that make, would surprise other people the most is the fact that I'm extremely in touch with my emotions, right? So if you hurt my feelings and I value you and, and we have a relationship, friendship, whatever, I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know what you did hurt my feelings. I'd appreciate if you wouldn't do that again. You know, like I'm that guy. Right. Like, I don't hold stuff yeah. in. I, if, there's, if there's any conflict whatsoever, I immediately have to resolve it. I mean, it's just, that is my personality at the core, right? So I was raised by my mother. Uh, my parents got divorced early. So I'm, you know, I'm really sensitive and in touch with my emotions. And uh, I cry, like when, when Fonzie was, you know, he moved out of the Cunninghams. That stuff was sad and I cried. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a, a big, imposing looking dude. Right. But, like, you know, I cry at movies and, uh, you know, and uh, like I said, I'll tell you if you hurt my feelings or not. And I'm, and I, I'm 100% about expressing my needs and wants and all that stuff. You know, yeah. I think the key to a healthy relationship is, you know, ex- letting your spouse or significant other know your expectations. This is what I need to feel fulfilled. I'm that dude. Like, yeah. there's never a question of where I'm at. I will tell you. <laughs> like, if we're friends, I'm like, I'm going to need you to respond to my text. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you don't respond. It offends me. And then I get angry. and I want to punch him out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, but yeah. That's, that's that's probably. I, I think most people would not think that I would be as as an emotional person as I am, right? But I, I contribute to the fact that my mother is like. Prior to meeting my wife, my mother is the most important person by far. Like no one in my entire life ever was even close, and now I have some. You know, my wife and my mom are, you know, the same place. So, uh, yeah. yeah, she she was just always there for me, and I've always been, I guess, just a guy who's really in touch with his emotions. Yeah. That's a that's a great way to be. I mean, I, I think you have the the build to back it up. Like I'm like five eight, one sixty five, and I'm emotional as well. But I I don't. It it doesn't seem as cool. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if it's the fact that I am a bigger guy, but I genuinely do not care about what other people think. You know, now I have all kinds of haters like online. People say stuff and it hurts my feelings. You know, um, but at, at the end of the day, I'm gonna be me. You know, yeah. you're going to like me for me or you're not going to like me for me, but I'm not going to change me for anybody, you know? So, uh, I don't think that's because I'm a bigger guy and people really aren't going to say anything, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's just because I feel like you got one life and I want to be the best version of me I can in that life. And I'm going to be just true to who I am. So nice. And that will roll us in to the next segment. In Todd, we trust. All right, so this is the final segment called In Todd We Trust, which is essentially leaving the listeners with a piece of advice that you would like to give to the Todd Squad. So the free reign here. Yeah. You've been you've free been dropping rain. free rain. dropping yeah. inspiration the entire time. <laughs> All right. So uh man, it's kind of like what I just said. Uh we're only here for such a short period of time. Uh be the best version you can be, whether that's the best physical version you can be, uh, be the best athlete you can be, best spouse you can be, best dad you can be, whatever it is, every day strive to be that better version of yourself. Um, and the other thing, which I think so many people take for granted or don't appreciate, I don't care how old you are. In my opinion, if you haven't traveled, you haven't lived. There is so much world out there to see and uh, go see it. You know, I mean, a trip to Europe I mean, you can just stop spending money at the convenience store or stop smoking cigarettes or, you know, don't drink as much beer for a few months. I mean, you can, you can, you can afford a trip to Europe. There's so much history over there. That's one thing my wife and I love to do is just see the world. 
Like, I'm going to be honest with you. My perfect world right now, uh, other than winning a billion dollars. Of course. <laughs> after that would be, I found a national brand, some sort of a brand that wanted me to, to uh, market their brand and, and go out and do expos and stuff. And I would wrap an RB with their brand. And we would just go on the road and hit an arm wrestling tournament or a fitness expo or whatever every week. And I'd just wake up somewhere new every day. I'd go see Yellowstone. I'd hit, you know, uh, you know, be on the West Coast, go to Seattle. And just I want to see it. I mean, I've, I've been to a lot of places in life through arm wrestling. But so many of those experiences I want to have with my wife um, because it's fun for me to let her see something for the first time and see the joy that it brings her. But that's it, man. I mean, be the best you you can be and see as much of this world as possible. Love it. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right. So with that, it's time to give a nod to Todd. Yeah. And Todd, just real quick, I want to say thank you again uh, for meeting with two guys who randomly reached out to you because you have the Todd in your name. So <laughs> yeah, hey man, it's awesome. Some- I really appreciate you guys. Also to all the listeners out there, subscribe to monster and Mrs. Monster on YouTube for some awesome training and hopefully some competitive eating. You know what I'm saying? So Ooh, yes, please here a little bit, but yeah, guys, I really appreciate you having me on there and it was fun. And, uh, let me know if there's anything else I can do. Absolutely. So with that, I'm Michael. I'm Brad. And he's Todd. Todd.